Hey, we need to get a front break on this thing. Welcome to Hacker Week. The CB750K3, as in 1973, came with a single disc on the front. It is possible to put two discs on the front, and that's what we're going to do today. All right, got the front wheel up here on the bench. Got to pull the speedo drive off. I've taken the axle nut off on the other side, so get that out of the way. So let's get the discs on. The first thing we want to do is drop these on with the, there's a flat side here that's machined away that goes inboard so drop that on line it up with the six holes that are in here it's going to go on a little bit tight i think on that adapter for the speedo that's an aftermarket adapter that goes on there it makes things a little bit tight we got these flanges that have to go on they drop on there like so so, six bolts. I've got bolts that'll run all the way through. Let's just run those in there for now. Uh, we'll drop them in like that. Okay, all six bolts are punched on through there. Let's see what we've got here. Boy, there's just enough sticking out to do the job. Put the little lock tabs on and we'll get some nuts threaded on there we'll run them all down here quick and I'm going to tighten all these to 15 foot pounds Now we can bend the tabs over. Whoops! Take a look at that. It sits crooked. Doesn't drop all the way on. You know why? Because this side was not meant to have a rotor on it. I just double checked on my drawing here and um, the speedo drive side is the one that has that, but the disc went over on this side, the rotor. So, uh, hmm, it'd be kind of nice to keep that dust seal there, but it looks like it'll work, but uh, some of this metal's got to go away. Check that out. I think we got it. Now we can put the axle back in. Just shove that all the way through. And get the axle nut tightened back up. <clears throat> Doesn't have to be real tight, it's just got to squeeze into the spacer that's in the middle of the uh, hub between the bearings. Now we can put it back on the bike, but we've got to put the pieces on the bike, the calipers and such. Once again, referring to the drawing, this is everything that's got to go on the forks, but it's got to go on both sides. So I've got all the pieces collected together, and we're going to start putting this all together. The very first thing that's going to have to go on would be the mount for the caliper. Uh, so let's just get it all out here on the bench first. These caliper arms are powder coated. This is why I freaking hate powder coat. Uh, anywhere that it gets inside of something that's critical tolerance, you've got to deal with that afterwards. And whoever powder coated these, they left the O-rings inside. They didn't even pop the O-rings out. So I had to pop those out of there. There's an O-ring goes on each end of this pivot shaft. And I can't put it in all the way. So I gotta clean all that out. The closest drill bit I could find is like a 25 60 fourths. Freaking English system. Uh, anyway, it's, it's close, but it's 
still a little, it's going to take some work. Um, here's the old ones, you know, some other ones I had too. The guy gave me two sets. This one's just the aluminum, no powder coat. It's all dirty and cruddy. Look at that. Goes right in like crazy. I, you know, I might just clean these up and use them. Now, what's wrong with that? Cleaned up aluminum. Lovely. I think it might have some gray paint on it, but it looks fine. And look at the bolt. I think it goes in there just fine. All right, we're going to use this. So we're going to mount the caliper arm on here. And it's got, uh, let's see, we got the caliper arm, we got the mount up top, and we got the pin that goes in. I've got some grease on the pin here. Um, a little bit up inside there. I already pushed it in there one time just to get a little grease going. So we'll put that in there like that. And we're going to put an O-ring up on the top side too. And we'll slide the upper portion in place. And then we can put it up here against the fork. We've got two six millimeter bolts that go in there, six by 25. And there's an eight millimeter bolt that goes down here. And you might have to squish that O-ring just a little bit to get that bolt to get started. Let's run these up. And we're gonna torque the six millimeter bolts to nine foot pounds. And then we'll torque the eight millimeter bolt to about 15 foot pounds. Should be just fine. This should move freely. And indeed it does. So this dual front disc setup on a 73 CB750 is just as new to me as it is to, well, maybe most of you. Um, something I'm already noticing, these two arms, they're not mirror image of each other. They're exactly the same. So the offset on one versus the other is a little different. So you can, you can see it here. Um, if I get the camera just right where we're looking down this plane being flush, let's take a look at where everything is here. I go over to this side and you can see that it's, it's mounted inboard just a little bit, a few millimeters difference. So I don't know, I guess the caliper will just maybe compensate for that. I guess we'll find out because I'm just going to keep assembling here and see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and put some calipers on here without any of the pistons in place. Just for uh, test purposes only here. This is all temporary so I'm not really torquing anything yet. This inboard pad gets a cotter pin in it but this particular pad has the uh, hole for the cotter pin offset in such a way that I can hardly push it through. Well, I guess, okay, good enough for now. Yeah, so, you know, I tried putting the wheel on here and um, this is just totally screwy. This makes no sense to me whatsoever. One side wants to go and the other doesn't. I'm not even gonna, to, you know, I just struggled with it for 15 minutes. It makes no sense at all because you know, it's not, uh, it's not mirror imaged. You can't just throw one on the other side and have that work. I really don't know what the hell the deal is here with this modification, but you know what? I'm gonna go back to just bone stock. Gonna put a brake on the side it was on. One brake's enough. I'm not gonna race the thing. I don't need to brake from 110 miles an hour. One brake. Okay, so back to a single brake setup. Got the uh, caliper arm on there, the caliper's on the floor. I've still got to clean that out, get the seal in it, hone it out, and uh, put all that together. Got the single disc back on the front on the uh, left side of the bike. Speedo drive is over there. Glad I had that spare dust cover that's not ground down. Maybe someday I will figure out what the, uh, the mod is and how this all works out. But for right now, I'm just not even wanting to mess with it. I just want to get front brakes on this thing uh, so I can drive it. Okay, let's move right along. So we got a caliper we got to clean out a little bit here. Um, we'll get some light on this, get it up close and personal. There's a bunch of corrosion in there I got to sand out. And way down in there, 
in that uh, can you see it I don't know if you can actually see it but there's a there's a groove down in there that's a little gross it's got some stuff in it I gotta clean that out probably a wire brush would be the call there because that's where the caliper seal goes the piston seal I mean um, goes in that little groove and then the piston brand new one here rides inside that so get that cleaned out so a small flat blade screwdriver down in there on the groove part anyway does a trick I need to hone out the cylinder here so I'm gonna put a little bit of Marvel mystery oil in there for lube got my brake cylinder hone here Let's tuck that down in there it's a lot like the cylinder hone for the uh, pistons on the motorcycle except this time I'm not gonna move it in and out I'm just gonna let it rotate move it a tiny bit and that's good all I was after there is to clean it up get rid of any burrs any pitting any strange stuff going on down in that cylinder and I'll clean it out now with a little bit of brake clean parts cleaner and there we go got a nice clean bore in there now okay a little silicone grease again on this seal just to help it get into that groove a little easier just gonna smear it with a tiny bit and we're going to put it down inside there and get it in that groove. Just going to get one side started and work your way around. There it goes, popped right in. Okay, let's get the piston in there now. The side that's open stays out and the flat side goes in. Gonna put just a little bit of silicone lube on there, a tiny bit down inside there on the seal, and just give it a little push. There we go. In it goes. Okay, the piston's in place. Now we need to put this little guy on, this backup pad that goes into the piston. Just kind of drops in there. I've got another one right here. You can see how it's shaped with a uh, convex shape to it uh, then we can put the pad in but before we do that there's a little screw that goes in the end here didn't come with the pad I did a little research and found some pictures on uh, Google image search it always helps with solving problems so I made this little screw out of a six millimeter screw and I ground it down a bit to um, that size so that it will fit into that little recess right there and it keeps the pad from rotating as it wears a little silicone grease around the outside of the pad just on the metal part not on the pad itself just a little bit to help it move a little easier in the caliper keep it from seizing up we'll put just a tiny bit inside there and then we'll drop the pad into place and the little screw I made sits in there just right now on the other side of the caliper I put a little grease around that one put the pad in put the cotter pin on the back and bent it over now we can assemble this to the arm here we are with the arm again with the pin through there the o-rings on each end and the mount up top and let's see this is going to be the inboard side so we'll put the caliper here this caliper here and let's get a bolt started we'll just start it by hand get the next one in there also start it just by hand all right we'll run those in until they bottom out And I'm going to torque those to 25 foot-pounds. There 
There we go. Let's get it on the fork. We've got the fork tube rotated around where you can see it here. This is going to sit like this. Okay, so, well, actually like that. And then we need to put the guard on for the rotor, the disc. I call it a rotor because I'm used to working on car rotors. Now we can get the, uh, we're going to leave these loose for now. Actually, I'll just put one bolt in there to hold it for me while I'm working on this next part. Put the adjuster bolt in. And we're going to put the spring in. And then we'll get it started in here. Screw it in. And screw it in until it just takes up the slack there with the, the spring. We're going to leave it just like that for now. We have a washer that goes here and a nut. And that nut is going to be what locks this in place once we get it adjusted. Now I've got a few bits and pieces here on the fender that I'm going to replace. Like there's some grommets that I need to replace here, uh, but I can do that later. But for right now I'm going to go ahead and mount this up. There's a side with two small holes that goes right here on this upper caliper arm mount. So let's see if we can shimmy this in here. Hmm. Hmm. How about if we swing that around? Get this up here and then see if we can swing the arm back around. There we go. Got you on the other side here so you can get a better view of what I'm doing next. Now I've got to get the fender down in there. And get that lined up with that bolt hole. And we're going to get a bolt started in there. Hopefully it cooperates and gets started fairly easily. It's a little tricky to get these to line up just right. Next one back. All right, back to the other fork. I'm going to move these into position. Got a couple of 22 millimeter long M6 bolts that go in there. Now we can go ahead and tighten all these up. We'll tighten all the six mil bolts to nine foot pounds. And finally, we'll tighten this eight millimeter bolt, eight by 35, to 15 foot pounds. All right. And we got four more attachment points to take care of for the fender. Two on each side. Get those on. Let's get a front tire in. Uh, let's swing the caliper out of the way a little bit. Get the tire in here at a little bit of an angle. You see I've got the front end supported by a jack stand there. Do it on the oil filter housing, which is probably, well, you know, maybe not the best idea, but there it is. Okay, and let's get over here and take a look at this. I'm gonna try to get a nice tight shot of what's going on here with the pads. I'm gonna make sure that they're separated, and then slide the the disc has to go right in there between the pads. Now we can go ahead and raise it up into place. Now the way I do these is uh, I just raise them up into place like so, wedge my knee under it, and I throw the cap on there. 
and then I put one nut on with no washers just to keep it in place and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side just put a nut on to keep it in place Then I'll come back over to this side with a nut and the washers. I've got a flat washer and a lock washer there. Then I can take this one back off. Also put a flat washer and a lock washer. And just repeat the same thing on the other side. Back over on this side, you want to make sure that the Speedo drive's got just a little bit of a downward angle to it. Now I'll draw these up with the ratchet till they just bottom out on both sides. And then I'll torque them to 15 foot pounds. Now as far as the adjustment here goes, right now there's just a tiny little bit of play in it. Brand new pads. So there's still a little bit of a gap. If I come over to this side you'll see on that adjuster screw there's a bit of a gap between the caliper arm and the screw. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that in until that just touches the caliper arm right there still got a little bit of play that way we're sure that when you back off on the brakes it's free wheeling now out here I'm going to tighten down the lock nut there's a slot in the end of that bolt so that you can get a screwdriver in it let's put the wrench on the nut hold the bolt and just give it a, a good snug, not too much. Check it again, got just a little play in it. All right. Okay, back to fully stock one disc. Um, I might go with two later. For right now, I just wanna get the thing together, get something working right. And I might go with two, I might not. Um, after doing some research, putting two on is a little sketchy because what you're doing is you're putting on an arm um, that was meant to go on this side of the bike and you're trying to put it over here and then you have to compensate with some shims and it gets uh, a little crazy over here with clearance for the brake line and whatnot and I'm sure it does indeed help the braking performance immensely but uh, I don't know I'm kind of thinking I'll probably just leave this alone because the other thing to consider is your having to apply pressure to two calipers but I've still got the stock uh, master cylinder over here on the bench that's designed to just push one caliper because it's displacing fluid inside here. And I, I imagine it would work okay, but uh, anyway, for now, single caliper. So let's move on now to the lines and the master cylinder. I've got this brake line assembly with the uh, splitter here that's got the brake light switch on it. And it's got a line that runs, got it upside down, runs up to the uh, master cylinder. And then we got a line that runs down to the caliper. It needs to bolt on right here. So let's run this line up through here. We're going to put this through the forks. Now there's a little locator that goes on here. What this does is just keeps the... Uh, banjo bolt in the proper place when you tighten it up gives you something to tighten against and as always tighten them to nine foot pounds and last we tighten up the banjo bolt just a good snug feel where you're crushing the two crush washers that are on there. The bike's back down on the ground now. We'll push this little grommet into the holder. And last but not least, we get the brake line connected. The hard line here. 
Now my general rule of thumb when you're putting these in, you should always be able to start them with your fingers. If you can't thread it with your fingers, something's wrong. Don't get a wrench on there and start cranking on it thinking it's just tight. You will end up screwing up the threads in the caliper. I learned this the hard way working on cars for 30 years. Right now this is bumping into the the bracket so I gotta do a little bending and tweaking here. All right that's a little better. Okay now let's see if I can get this started. Look at it from this angle, look at it from this angle, make sure it's perpendicular. Wiggle the line a little as you turn it make sure you can get at least a half a turn on there. Now I'll get a wrench on it. And it should turn easy. If it isn't turning easy, stop. Double check to make sure you don't have it cross-threaded. go. That is that. Let's take a look at what we got here. The brake line comes up. It doesn't touch anything. It clears the fork. It clears the fender. And there it is located in its little grommet. Now that we've got everything installed there on the bottom tree, we can go ahead and connect up the brake light switch wires. They're right here. They come out right behind the uh, fuel tank. So we'll go ahead and put those on. Well, here's the master cylinder, and uh, here is the rebuild kit for it. Let's open this up. We have some seals that need to go on here, and then all that assembly is going to go down inside here. But inside there, it's a little, uh, let me take a look, it's a little corroded looking. See if I can give you a look inside there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's some corrosion and uh, yuck down inside that cylinder. I need to clean that out. And earlier in the video you saw me use a cylinder hone to do that job, but I don't have one that's that tiny. What I do have is some um, 320 grit wet or dry sandpaper. Okay, we're going to make a cylinder hone. I'm going to roll up this piece of wet o dry 320 paper. I'm going to get some oil on it. I have a little on there already. Shove it down into the cylinder. And then I'm going to put a hose clamp here. Put it this way. Take a 3 8 drill bit. Shove it down inside the sandpaper. Tighten up the hose clamp onto the drill bit, thus locking the sandpaper into place. And hopefully, this will spin with the drill, and we have a little cylinder hone. Nope, oh, gotta get it a little tighter. Lovely, there we go. Ichiban would be proud of this one. Let's get a little more oil in there. Oil helps it cut a little better. Well, that looks better. What do you think? Not bad. I might go over it again with uh, maybe some 600. And there it is after some 600. That looks good. There we go. We got a single disc mounted up front. Got a caliper on. Got the brake line on. I'm going to save the master cylinder until next week. I've got to order the proper rebuild kit. The one I've got doesn't have the check valve. It's missing a couple parts. I don't know what the hell this kit was, but it's missing two critical parts. Really strange. But anyway, I'm going to order another one. Next weekend, we'll put the master cylinder on. Uh, show you how to put that together and bleed the brakes. We'll have brakes then all the way around. After that, it's uh, the seat, the rear fender. 
a few nuts and bolts and I think maybe we're about ready to take it for a safety inspection and get it licensed. <laughs> I'm stoked. I can't wait to get riding this thing. So there you go. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the donations and support. And until next time. Um, I've got to pull the Speedo drive off. No, that's not the drive for my bathing suit for all you uh, people who grew up in the 70s. Um.